Hello everyone, I am The Weather Dude, welcome back, and today we are going to be talking about a potential tropical storm that could potentially form pretty close to home. But before we get into it, be sure to like and subscribe to keep up with the best weather content out there, and we're just going to get right into it. So starting off here, looking at this system on the satellite, and you can see uh, we got some you know decent rotation. You can see the low pressure sitting right in here, and we've also got some decent convection uh, on that north and northeast side of the system. You can see there's a lot of shear, though, uh, in the environment right now, and it's probably going to be one of the limiting factors for the system to develop. But you can see there's a lot of convection. It's kind of joined up with a little frontal boundary. But you can see there is definitely a swirl in the in the uh, in the air there, and you can see that the low pressure is spinning over uh, what looks to be some pretty favorable conditions, depending on which uh, which factor we're talking about, because there's a lot of factors that can determine whether tropical storms or hurricanes can form. You know, the sea surface temperature, you know, the sea subsurface temperature could be another one, like, you know, how far, you know, how warm is the water below the surface, you know. There's also the dry air and the wind shear and a bunch of other things. But looking at the National Hurricane Center and a change from last year now is that there's still the two day, but now there's all, now it's the seven day uh, outlook. So the outlooks go out seven instead of five days. But you can see 10% chance of development, pretty small chance. But there could be something here and there also is another system um, that's around here that we're going to be watching as well. It could actually be the same system morphing into something else, but we're going to show that in the models in just a little bit. But you can see there the low pressure center. And if we read the National Hurricane Center's description, this is I'm pretty sure this is the first thing we've gotten um, for the season. Uh, you can see a broad surface flow is centered a couple hundred miles northeast of the central Bahamas. Again, some disorganized showers and thunderstorms. Environmental conditions, though, as I said, are forecast to become less favorable. So they are sort of favorable right now, but they're going to become less favorable later. And development is not expected, but it will be, it'll be moving north-northeast at 5 to 10 miles an hour uh, over the next couple of days. So not moving too fast, which means that, again, if it's sitting in the somewhat favorable condition, condition zone now, maybe since it's moving slower, it could have, again, it has a small chance to develop. And I'm, I'm going to be showing in the video why you shouldn't discount the system because it could still form, and even if it doesn't, what it could still bring. But let, and my goodness, let's just take a look at these... Uh, Sea surface temperature anomalies here. I mean, the Gulf of Mexico is back to full. I mean, they're full steaming. All right. We're talking two, three, even over three degrees Celsius in some spots in the north. Uh, Celsius above average. The Caribbean, especially the northern part of the Caribbean, about two degrees Celsius above average. And even where there's that disturbance is, which is right in this zone. All right. Sitting in some pretty warm water, right? Sea surface temperatures are pretty far above average, about, again, two degrees Celsius. But look at the changes in the past seven days. I mean, I mean, we're talking a widespread one to two Celsius uh, improvement, one to, one to two degrees Celsius temperature improvement in these waters right in this zone here just in the past week. And you can see, I mean, the whole zone is just orange. Even the Caribbean's gained about a half a degree to a degree Celsius in the past week. So waters have really warmed up in this zone, and they've already been above average even uh, during the middle part of the spring season, like back in like April. And so you can see the actual sea surface temperatures where the storm is right now, that disturbance is sitting in about 80 degree waters. Pretty much at this point, the entire Gulf of Mexico is 80 degrees plus. The Caribbean is like nearing in on the mid 80s, especially in the northern part uh, of the sea. And the Gulf Stream has definitely surpassed 80 degrees Fahrenheit at this point as well. So again, this is starting to expand. It's starting to, we're starting to see that zone. Uh, so anywhere in this yellow here represents about 77 degree waters. All right. And usually that's like the bare minimum threshold to form a tropical storm. Usually 80s where we where we need to get a hurricane going. But you can see that zone is continuing to expand and it will continue to expand as we head up until August and September. Let's take a look at some of the factors that are working against it a little bit. Right. And there is not that much shear where the storm is. But of course, you know, these systems can sometimes shield themselves a little bit uh, from the wind shear. But, of course, you can see it's heading into a not-so-favorable environment in terms of the shear. And you can see right, I mean, all around it to the west and to the east, the shear is high and has been building over the past 24 hours by 10 as much as 20 knots in some areas. So, and yes, the shear around the system center has been dropping by 10 knots in the past 24 hours. So it's not doing too bad, but again, there's a lot of shear coming in from the west. That's, of course, not going to help the system's development that much. The models seem to have some confidence in it. If we look... These are these global ensembles, the NCP, the FNMOC, the Canadian, and the European model, uh, kind of like a combined probability outlook. And they think an 80 to 90% chance of development, but this, uh, these maps are usually a little bit bullish. But do take that into account. But still, 
this definitely, but that does point out to us that this is an area to watch. Right, and that could form it to our first tropical storm of the year. And maybe if the wind shear is the only thing that's a problem, maybe if we, you know, we got the warm waters, maybe if we got, or even if it heads into cooler waters, maybe if we got you know, the higher wind shear, but maybe the dry air backs off, we could have a subtropical storm. That's not out of the question either. So definitely uh, keep that in mind as well. So here are the NCEP ensembles. These are the probabilities. And you can see that little pink in there. This is, I'm pretty sure this is just the NCEP ensembles. They show about 100% chance of development. And you can see the uh, ensemble tracks kind of tracking it in north and then eventually, you know, north, northeast, to northeast direction. And there's that other area I was, I was talking about as well that could track up the uh, mid-Atlantic coastline that we're going to be taking a look at as well. Again, it could actually be just this low morphing into another low, but yeah, we're going to, we're going to uh, analyze it in the models in just a little bit to find out. So here we are with the uh, favorability conditions. Again, right where it's sitting right now, the conditions are favorable and even highly favorable. But it's that little zone. I feel like once it gets out into the more open waters closer to Bermuda, I feel like the storm is not going to have such an easy time uh, developing here. You can see on the 850 millibar vorticity signature, you can see there's an the area. It's pretty circular. And we got a nice uh, little ball of energy that's going to be, again, making its way to the north. You can kind of see that frontal boundary kind of uh, draped across the uh, east coast here. If you look at the dry air, there's actually not much of it. Right? And you sometimes, you know, the clouds are over top of this layer, which shows the dry air. So, like, there's still dry air up here. But, honestly, in the tropical Atlantic, especially considering the time of year, it goes a little bit, yeah. But, I mean, <laughs> considering it's May, that's not too bad. Not much dry air out there. And the central and the eastern Caribbean, pretty much no shear. And not much either in the northern Gulf of Mexico. And even like the Northwest Atlantic, or we call it off the Southeast coast, there's not much there either. So again, that lack of dry air could be one thing along with the sea surface temperatures that could be helping the system. Wind shear might be one of the things that's gonna be going against it here in this scenario. If we take a look at the oceanic heat content, you can see most of that, those medium to high values will be found over the Caribbean. Um, so yes, not much heat below the surface, but there is some sea surface temperature uh, favorability here to, you know, temperatures around 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So again, that water, you need that warm water below the surface to really energize that system. So that's another clue that maybe if this does form, maybe it'll be more of a subtropical system, All right? You can see there is rotation and you can see this is on the European model and you can see sustained winds are being picked up. Actually, I'm going to switch this over to miles per hour. Uh, so sustained winds are picked up with the European model about 30 miles an hour. All right, with winds gusting upwards of about 40-ish, uh, especially, you know, around 37, 38 on the north side of the... But, of course, you need those sustained winds to be a tropical storm force, which is 39 miles an hour. So you can see the as the low... Again, I'm going to show this, like, on the actual uh, model, like, on the tropical tidbits, but you can see the low moves to the north. Again, it kind of merges with another piece of energy. So it's kind of just one big sloppy, you know, low-pressure system at that point. But let's take a look here at the sea surface temperatures. So you see it's sitting at about 82, 81 degree waters. As it moves north, it will still hold 80s for a little bit, but again, eventually once it gets closer to Bermuda, maybe more like mid 70s. But still, I mean, that's kind of, I mean, that's kind of warm, but it's not that warm. Uh, the Caribbean is already 85, 86 even, closer to Cuba. Like the waters there are getting crazy warm. Even towards like New Orleans, the sea surface temperatures are about 84 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, 83, 82, like, the fact that it's May, like this is honestly very concerning. Uh, I know we're getting into an El Nino, but still, these are very warm waters. That is something that could work for not only for this system, but maybe for other systems in the future. Look at this, 88 near like off uh, the coast of uh, Guatemala here. So that's the highest rating I've seen on this map so far. So at least for this year. So yeah, very warm waters. I can only imagine getting warmer. I'm sure in the East Pack, we'll see 90s pretty soon. But focusing on where we are here, yes, very warm water, well above 80 degrees Fahrenheit. But again, it's more of, will that wind shear kind of work for or against the system? So finally here to conclude, let's get into some modeling. So we're starting off with the GFS model. You can see the low on the bottom right of your screen, moving its way to the north. Again, staying relatively weak, but you can kind of see kind of meanders back. We see another little low pressure form and that one, um, you kind of meanders as well. And then we see one forming right here. Again, relatively low, weak, low pressure systems, but that could track up the coast and with this one, to keep in mind is that, you know, if it tracks along that Gulf Stream, that could really help to ignite those systems relatively quickly. It's that warm uh, burst of water here. And the Gulf Stream, by the way, all the way up the Carolinas is off of Cape Hatteras is even 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So those 80 degree values will c continue to spread further north of the Gulf Stream. They'll transfer that, that energy and that warm water 
up. So like this area where it was, you know, where it's like 75, 76, this was probably in the low 70s a couple months ago. So eventually those warm waters will make their way further to the north. Yeah, that's the GFS model here. You can see a lot of low pressures off the southeast coast, you know, one, two, even three uh, low pressure systems. But here's a storm on the bottom right of your screen again. Taking a look at the European model, kind of just meanders there. I mean, this is two days later, still kind of sitting there, right? Because you can see in that yellow zone, this is pretty much where it's going to be over the next, you know, few days, according to the uh, National Hurricane Center. Eventually, though, the low will move to the north, kind of just, again, meanders off the southeast coast. You can kind of see that's going to make it a little rainy for the Carolinas, you know, for Florida. Could even see uh, some increased moisture and some precipitation because that low just kind of sitting there. And eventually, we'll move up the coast and even... Uh, it kind of looks like this uh, this uh, little model run right here, similar to this. It could even turn into into the coastline here, maybe going to Delmarva, maybe bring in some more rain. But again, nothing getting too rel you know too relatively strong, so to speak. Um, you can see again, Canadian model also agrees the low kind of moves out, kind of meanders along the southeast coast. Although they do have it getting a little bit stronger, maybe a subtropical, extra tropical low pressure system maybe even something tropical right? and you can see the pressure drop in 995 993 and then it kind of just moves its way kind of makes its way off of the coastline there let's take a look at the sustained winds we we're taking a look at those earlier to see like how strong you know the winds could be with these systems so you can kind of see this little area of energy is kind of frontal system that's kind of draped across here the low will kind of end up merging with that to create some potentially strong winds you know about a little over 32 knots here which is again a little shy that's about 34 knots is what you need for a tropical storm. Uh, but, and you can see a low pressure. Again, maybe some areas of orange on the map here. So again, maybe some stronger winds on that back side uh, of that low to help create some, you know, higher wave heights. Maybe, again, yeah, maybe even some tropical storm force wind conditions briefly. Uh, maybe not over land ne necessarily. But you can see, yeah, winds 35, 40 miles an hour uh, where the low pressure center is. According to the GFS model, that will continue to play out. Even through the end of the month, I think the, the low pressure could still be hanging around here. We take a look at the European model, all right? And you can see kind of similar things here. Low kind of merges the little piece of energy. Um, and we see those prolonged er area of uh, winds of 35, maybe closer to 40 miles an hour along the south, draped across the southeast coast from like Jacksonville, you know, Daytona Beach, all the way up to the coast of Cape Hatteras. You can just kind of see it's just this little funneled area of wind. That's going to be elevating, you know, elevating those wave heights, you know, maybe a little bit more coastal flooding than usual. All right, so definitely something to keep an eye on there. So even if it doesn't, this doesn't form into something, it could still bring precipitation, still could bring some impacts. Uh, and it's kind of like the takeaway here from this video. But with the Canadian model, I mean, they got this thing forming, you know, with winds 55, 60, you know, miles an hour. Uh, and a much bigger wind field too, by the way. Like all that entire green zone is winds of 25 miles an hour sustained. Uh, and, and greater, which can make for some pretty strong winds, especially if you're out, you know, walking or on a bike, you'll, you'll feel those 25 mile an hour winds. They won't feel so light after all, for sure. Uh, if we take a look here at the relative humidity map, now the reason I like to look at this is because you can kind of take a look at the upper level winds and how the storm is kind of stacked at different levels of the atmosphere, kind of like using this map for that. So you can see here, you can see how the upper level winds are kind of cutting through the low meaning it's not quite stacked too properly, but you can see it is carrying some moisture with it, especially on this north and east side. Maybe a little upper level uh, low pressure, low piece of energy here draped over the cross the southeast as well. And you can see, again, as the low moves to the north, now we start to see some rotation, you know, some you know upper level rotation, but we don't really see anything at the surface anymore. But you can still see there's a lot of pressure, I'm sorry, a lot of moisture uh, making its way through the mid-Atlantic. And you can see that low pressure forming, all right, with the upper level winds rotating around it, showing an organized system that's carrying a lot of moisture with it. That'll be towards the end of the month, about 10 days from now, around May 31st. And we take a look at the European model here. You can see if we fast forward a little bit, I got to fast forward pretty far. Um, you can see again, a lot of dry air around the low pressure system, not much, you know, not, not a lot of moisture to really get the storm going. All right, you can see, but there is some increased moisture over the Southeast. Here comes that low pressure system, so kind of separate here from the other one. You can see that could also bring some increased moisture to the mid-Atlantic. But you can see even this one, the upper level winds are kind of cutting through that low pressure system. If the storm was organized, it'd be kind of rotating around it as the storm builds itself in the higher uh, altitudes. You can see it moves to the north, and it becomes a little bit more organized, but again, still a little dry air wrapped around inside it. So 
something to keep an eye on there. And finally, of course, the Canadian model and actually does not have these have the uh, relative humidity map. So again, uh, looking here at the Canadian model, you can see again, little recap, there's a storm again, getting a lot stronger than the other models have it. So definitely something to keep an eye out here over the next seven, but even over the next like, you know, 14 days as well. Basically up until the end of the month, we, we've got to be watching this low pressure system carefully because it's moving slow and an, uh, other low pressures could actually, you know, spawn in from those boundary systems. Maybe something could merge off of Florida. So the point is over the next 10 days, I would definitely watch out for potential for a tropical or a subtropical storm to form off the coast of the southeastern United States. Thank you guys for watching. I'm the other dude signing off. Till next time, I will catch you guys in the next video.